Back on the color palette, the right mouse button in Corel changes the outline. I just gave this a very, very thin hairline black outline. Hard to see, to see till I zoom in. Now, you may think, well, that's okay, but that's too, that's too thin for screen printing. We, we need heavy, thicker outlines for screen printing. I'm going to go over to the left-hand toolbar and click on the outline pen tool and give it a thicker outline. Now, that doesn't look correct because in computer graphics, the outline actually goes from the center. I just gave this thing a 12-point outline, and it made the outline fatter from the center, meaning it went six points into our design and six points away from our design. If I go back to the outline pen tool, go to the very first little guy in called the outline pen dialog, and I click on the checkbox that says behind fill, I've now put the outline behind the fill. Now we have a very respectable two color image. Now, if we go to the file pull down menu, come down to print, and come over to separations, if we look down below, we have our two colors, and on the right of the screen, it shows the actual separations. If I check print separations, on the right of the screen, it shows the word t-shirts, there's the fill, there's the outline, there's our two separations right there. And if we now say print, these print out, and we can tell Corel to put registration targets in the corners, so when we go to press, we can line things up, and we just did a very simple two color separation. Okay, we did our simple two-color design, and that wasn't too hard, but what happens when they do bring you that sketch, that idea, and you have to have either someone draw it or you trace it, and you end up with a piece of what we would call line art. This is typically called black and white art. It used to be called camera-ready art, but today we call it scanner-ready art, and we've got to scan it in. Now, a lot of times it's going to be their business card, and that's the problem. They've got this little tiny logo on the business card, and we've got to blow this thing up and make it huge on a shirt, and they wonder why the image is a little jagged. It's because the design was sharp, small, and then we blew it up. But we're going to take and scan this image in. We're going to put this in the scanner. And we're going to go back to the computer. I'm in uh, Adobe Photoshop right now for scanning. We're going to show you Photoshop in just a second, but I'm going to use Photoshop for scanning right now. You could scan directly into Corel Draw if you want to. I'm going to go to File, Import, and I'm going to load my scanner driver. Now a scanner will typically scan the page for a set first to show you where the image is. It's doing a very quick what's called a preview scan. So it shows you the image and it really wants you to tell it what you want to scan. I want to scan just the image, not the entire page obviously. Now, the important thing to remember on using any kind of your we'll call them inexpensive scanners. I hate to say consumer, but really they are consumer. When you pay 60 bucks for a scanner, you're getting kind of a toy at times. And they're pretty well set for low resolution. We're t-shirt printers, we need, we need higher resolution. If we take an image that's that big and we blow it up, uh, when the scanner sees the image, it's gonna make the entire image consist of small pixels. And if we have a low resolution, meaning 72 dots per inch, which is typically what a web graphic is, or what scanners are set to the default, if we scan at low res at the same size, then we enlarge the image, let's say twice that size, that makes the resolution drop in half, if that makes sense, and we have a pretty jagged edge to our image. We want to typically scan at much higher resolution, like a piece of black and white line art like this. I might scan at 600 dpi, 800 dpi, 1000 dpi, making those pixels real small, and I would scan at that resolution at the final size I want on the shirt. And you'll see why I want to do that in a second. Let's go back to our scanner, though. So we have our resolution set correctly. We're going to say accept. We're going to have it scan the image. Now there's the scanned image. And we can save this file and bring this file into Corel Draw. I'm going to save this file as a bitmap file, meaning it's going to be just black and white with no color. And I'm going to bring this file into Corel Draw. Okay, we scanned the image, we scanned it at high resolution, we saved it, we scanned it into Photoshop, we saved it, 
And the problem is an image like this is all pixels, all little bitmaps, little little tiny pixels and dots. And as I said earlier, Corel Draw or Adobe Illustrator, both programs are vector-based programs. You can't do much with an image when you bring it into Corel Draw if it's little pixels. That's why they do make another program that's are, that are add-on programs to your vector programs called tracing programs. Corel Draw comes with a program called Corel Trace. Corel Trace is free with Corel Draw. It comes as a utility program with Corel Draw. A tracing program takes those little pixels and those little bitmaps and converts it to what's called vectors. Meaning if I want to take our little squeegee guy that we just scanned and if I want to add any color to him, I can't do anything to him right now because he's black and white. He's going to stay black and white. If I take him into a tracing program and convert him into vectors, I can now fill him with color and, and color separating. Let's go back to the monitor right now. I'm in a program called Corel Trace. This is the original piece of art that we scanned just a second ago. I brought it up into Corel Trace. Now, if I tell Corel Trace to give me a very accurate trace, making it 100%, and if I say do trace, the right screen shows the, the trace happening. And it's finished tracing. Now, I can actually click on this object, this, this screen. I can go to the edit pull down menu and say copy. And I can go to Corel Draw and open up Corel Draw. And I can right mouse click and paste the image in. And there is now my squeegee guy in Corel Draw. And you'll notice that there's no, no background around him. If he, as a scan, he had a, sol a solid white background. There's no background around him now. I can click and drag and make him bigger. I can put him in lower. I can click on the word t-shirts. I can right mouse click and say change the order and bring the t-shirts to the front. Put the squeegee guy behind it. I can control Z which un is an undo. And I now have basically a two color design. Black outline, red fill for the word t-shirts and squeegee guy that's in black and white. I can now go to the color palette and I can start filling squeegee guy with color. I can click and drag and drop a color, click and drag and drop a color because now that he's vectors, I can fill him with color. I can pick up a brown for the squeegee handle, drop it there. I can select just the handle by itself, pick up what's called the interactive fill tool from the toolbar. Bring it up over the handle, click and drag and give it a slight gradation, and life is good. Now I'm going to finish filling him with color, and then we'll output color separations for our simple design, and we'll put it on screens. Go to press, set it up, and print it.